So, uh, what's up ladies and gents, um, hopefully we'll do them on the half of the day, so I wanted to, um, <coughs> touch upon, uh, to, I had to touch upon something that, um, I touched upon in a recent video, um, that I did on my channel earlier on, um, I wanted to, uh, talk, um, about the, uh, Holy Jolies and the way that they kind of exploited EDD and trans. Now, that's what, that's the only bit really have been my problem. Um, you know, with it, to be honest, is the fact that, you know, it's the way that they exploited it. I think, to be honest with you, when you look at it, right, it was never really easy. It was never really their story to tell. It was more you know, Edie's story to tell when she felt that she was ready to share that story with the world. But, you know, and it felt like something that should never have been shared online until she was ready for it to be shared online. You know, it, it's like they, it, the problem with Jonathan and Anna is it felt like they didn't care about how they, um, well, about how they kind of, about how they kind of, about, well, I didn't really care about that, I didn't really care about how she felt, you know, if she, well, you know, they had about their kids, or if they had about me, they would never have shared that online, at the end of the day, it wasn't their story to share, you know, it was her, it was Edie's story to share when she felt that the time was right when she felt that she was ready to do that. You know, and that's what a way that people need to look at it. Is that it wasn't, you know, it wasn't Jonathan and Anna's story to share. Like, that's the kind of consensus I get with this, is that obviously people weren't happy with the fact that, you know, aren't happy with the way that Jonathan and Anna have exploited Edie being trans. Now, I know that some people think that Edie is ultimately too young to be trans, and I hear that. You know, I, I get where some people are coming from with that, you know. I, I understand why, you know, I, well, I, I completely understand why some people would think, you know, would think that or would be of that opinion that Edie is too young to be trans. Um, you know, and I wouldn't say that they're, the people are wrong for having that opinion, but, you know, it's just... Unfortunately, that is some. Of, that is the opinion that some of them have. Is that, that some people do have? Is that they don't particularly agree with Edie being trans, and I don't think it's a bad thing that people don't agree with that. I think you know, I think people have every right to not agree with it. To, you know, for a certain reason. Um, I think there is a certain reason why people don't, and I think that is one of the big reasons why you know people don't genuinely agree with it. There's uh, much as maybe they should agree with it. I think maybe Edie was a little bit older than uh, she is. I think maybe they would. I think people would be more understanding and would be more uh, kind of not not as negative towards them over it. I think they would not get as much backlash. But um, I mean, obviously, I mean, as I said, I don't have a problem with Edie being trans. Um, obviously, I only, I only, I've only ever had, well, yeah, maybe time, I've only ever had a problem with the way that Jono and Anna have both exploited that. Like, that, to me, is wrong, the way they've exploited it, and I think a lot of people would say that, a lot of people would look at it and go, they shouldn't be exploiting this, they shouldn't be, you know, putting that out there, they shouldn't, well, they shouldn't have been broadcasting it, especially not until, obviously, ED was okay with that, and not until ED felt that she was ready for that to be broadcasted all over the internet, you know. Um, I mean, you think about the way that, I mean, it felt, if I know that he was exploited it more, I feel like Jonathan has definitely exploited the whole trans child thing way more than Anna has. I mean, yeah, but, you know, they're, they're both, they have both exploited it, you know, yeah, and I don't think anybody would deny that, you know. And I don't think there's any dispute in that, but I do think that Jonathan has definitely exploited it way worse than what Anna has. Without a doubt, you know. I want to, to be honest, you know, I want to think that I'm being harsh with this, but I do just feel like they should have, 
not the relationship, not a shared or a trans a trans child thing, on, a trans thing online until Edie was ready for it to be shared online, you know. It, it feels like they didn't really stop to think about how she'd feel. You know, it feels like all Jonathan and Anna have ever heard about is how they can profit off something. Like, that's always, it feels like that's always been their number one priority for them is the way that they can profit off something. You know, as long as they're profiting off of something, then, you know, nothing else matters. You know, all, 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 you know, all they care about is the fact that they're actually profiting off of it. You know, and I feel like they profited off of the whole trans child thing in quite a substantial way. Like, I, mean, I think about the amount of money they've made from the trans child stuff alone. You know, it's just unbelievable, you know, it's, it's unbelievable to think about the amount of money they've actually made from that. You know, and it's quite sad to think about, really, the fact that they've made so much money, basically, off of their, you know, off the fact that their child, off of their child being trapped. You know, you know, I think, I think a lot of other parents would have handled the whole trans child thing so much better and so much more appropriately than what Anna and Jonathan have. You know. I know that most parents, if their child came to them and told them and told them that their child and told them that they were trans and things like that, their first thought would be to broadcast that all over social media and to exploit that in some way. You know, they would want to keep that private until their child, you know, they would do the respectful thing and keep that private until they until their ch until the child was ready for it to be shared online and why have you. And that's what Jonathan and Anna should have done with Edie. Is they should not have shared the whole trans child thing on the trans stuff online until Edie herself was ready, you know, and, and was happy for it to be shared online. You know, it, as I said, it was it, it, it's, it wasn't Jonathan and Anna's story to tell. It was Edie's story to tell when she felt that the time was right when she felt that she was ready to share that story. You know, when she felt that, you know, it should have been her journey to share when she felt the time was right. You know. But my, as I said, my my anger with this is the way, is when I think about the way that Jonathan and Anna have exploited it. Like, it's just disgusting the way they've both exploited it. And I think there's no denying that they've exploited it so badly. I mean, I, you know, as I said in, in my earlier video, you know, I am glad that, you know, they're not focusing on it so much now, but I feel like, you know, and I feel like it's not a bad thing that they're not, that they're not focusing on the whole trans child thing as much. You know, I'm kind of allowed, you know, I'm kind of glad that they've sort of seemingly turned their attentions away from that now. You know, if you think about the amount of videos, and this is, a, again, this is something I touched upon in the videos, in the video I did this morning, I was saying about how Jonathan had done, you know, Jonathan has posted well over 100 different, 100 videos on his channel, 100 short, 100 YouTube shorts on his channel that, but that revolve around his child being trans, you know. I thought the problem with, the, you know, the, the thing is that there's been I didn't like about the Honey Jolie family for a long time, you know, is that for the longest time, it felt like everything sort of revolved around Edie being trans. You know, it felt like her being trans made her the favourite child in a way. You know, and I, you know, I didn't like to be honest. I didn't like the way that everything was sort of, you know, revolving around Edie being trans. It didn't feel like, you know, everything should revolve around that. But that's what it felt like. It felt like everything did sort of revolve around Edie being trans. I mean, now it doesn't feel like that. It feels like it does as much. Like, it, it, you know, now these days it doesn't feel like things revolve around, everything revolves around Edie being trans as much as it used to do. You know, back, you know, before it used to feel like it revolved around that a lot more. You know, and... 
you know, I mean, I, as, as I said, I, you know, I've never had a problem with Edie being trans. Like, I do, I to, to be honest, I, and as I said, and I, and, I, and as I said before, if she's trans, because I don't know how. You know, I, 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 I don't know what to believe. I don't know what the truth is. I, I, I want to believe that. Jonathan and Anna didn't have any influence in Edie's decision to be trans. But I honestly do think they did have a lot of influence on that. And I also don't want to say that, you know, they had no influence on that decision. They, know, they never don't admit that, you know, they did sort of influence Edie's decision in some way. But I think we all know that they did. I think, we, I think everybody knows that. Well, most people of common sense know that, you know... I think Jonathan definitely had more of an influence in it than Anna did. Um, you know, I think he was the main kind of driving force behind Edie becoming trans. Yeah, I mean, I think Anna's the main driving force behind Edie becoming trans. Yeah, I mean, I think Anna's the main driving force behind Edie becoming trans. Yeah, I mean, I think Anna's the main driving force behind Edie becoming trans. Yeah, I mean, they ever that they only ever really saw, you know, a trans child as something that they could as something that they could profit from. Like no other parent would see it like that. No parent would see, you know, their child being trans as something that they could exploit and make money from. But that's how Anna and Jonathan obviously saw it. They obviously saw that as something that they could exploit, something that they could profit from and make money out of money and make a shit ton of money from. As when you think about it, they have made a shite ton of money from, you know, this whole trans child stuff. You know, they've profited off of that in quite as, you know, extravagant, quite a substantial way. And, you know, it's not a good thing, the fact they profited off of it, you know, the way they have. It's not a good way, it's not a good thing that they, you know, it, it's not... You know, it, it's, not, it's not acceptable the way they've exploited it. Like, they've exploited it in such a dis vile, disgusting way. Like, they've shown, it feels like they've shown, like, throughout this, you know, the past few years, they've shown no respect to ED whatsoever, you know. If they, were, if, they were, if, they, if they if they had any decency, if they had shown, if they had wanted to show any respect, they would not have shared Edie's story online until she was ready. And she felt that the time was right for her story to be shared online, you know. It should have been her. It wasn't their story to share anyway. It was Edie's story to share, and it should have been her story to share when the you know when the time was right. It wasn't Jonathan and Anna's story. You know, it wasn't Jonathan and Anna's story to share. You know, it was Edie's story to share when she felt the time was right to do that. When she felt that she was ready to do that. You know, it's just a horrible, horrible situation. When I think, you know. Seeing the way that they've exploited Edie and her being trans in particular, it's just, you know, absolutely disgusting. Like, that's why, that's, you know, when I see a trans child, when I see them post a trans child, well, when I see Jonathan post a trans child video, it just shows me how, how badly they're exploiting it. Like, it's like, yeah, we let the child is trans, move on, forget about it, you know? Like, who even cares that Edie's trans or not? I don't think anybody cares about that anymore. I don't think anybody really gives a shit whether the child is trans or not. You know, it's like, yeah, people used to care a lot about that, but they used to care a lot about that. But I don't think people really care about it anymore. You know, I think people are so over it now, to be honest with you. You know, I know that some people are still... You know, uh, I think the Edie is a, a full of girl, but I still, I, 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 I won't believe that. I, 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 that's just, it's the problem with, you know, it's hard because the problem with Jonathan with the Honey Jolie family is that nothing about them feels real, ever feel, has ever felt real or has ever felt genuine. Like, everything about them has always felt fake, you know, it's always felt st like it was staged. And for the like, it always felt like they, it was being put on for the like, and for the cameras or whatever. Like, none of it feels real. None of it feels genuine. And not, not, nothing about them feels real. Nothing about them feels genuine. 
you know, and it's, and it's the same sort of thing with the Inums, you know, I've said this about them before as well, that nothing about them feels real, nothing about them feels genuine, you know, everything about them feels completely and utterly fake. And it's the same thing with the Holy Joe Elites, is that everything about them feels completely and utterly fake as well. You know, nothing about them feels real at all, and it never has. Nothing about them ever has felt real. To be fairly honest with you, nothing about them ever has felt genuine. And this is the problem with the whole, the my mate, this is the main problem with the whole trans child thing. Is that it's never really felt like ED was actually genuinely trans. Like it just, nothing about it has ever, you know, every time I've watched a video about ED being trans, it's like, nothing about it has ever felt real. Nothing about it has ever felt 100% genuine. Like, these are, you know, like, these are not doubts that, you know, I've not, I've not had, uh, you know, these, are, these aren't doubts I've started having over the past few months. I've always had these doubts about it, but I've had these doubts about it for a very long time. You know, I do, I mean, I want to believe that Edie's genuinely trans. It's not, it's not that I don't want to believe that she's genuinely trans. It's just that I can't believe she's genuinely trans because nothing about the Holy Journey family feels ever feels real or ever feels genuine. Which is why it's so hard to believe that she's actually trans because it just doesn't feel like that. You know, it just does, nothing about it feels real or genuine. And I don't know what else to say. Like, you know. So all I can say about Jonathan and Anna is they are very, very good at exploiting, abusing, grooming, you know, manipulating their hits. And I only hope that when those four hits grow up, they realise that they look back at their childhood and realise just how badly they were exploited by their mother and father. You know, I wouldn't want hits to hunt ties with their parents, but they, I hope that when they get older, they do hunt ties with Jonathan and Anna. You know, I hope that when, as I said, like, my, like, I think, this is the sad thing about it, is that they're still so young, like, they still don't really understand that their parents are exploiting them, you know, abusing them, grooming them, manipulating them, you know, and just, you know, they, they, they're too young to realise that, or to understand that their parents are just exploiting them and using them for money and views and content every day, you know. I mean, it's just, it's sad when you think about it. You know, it, it's sad when you think about the fact that those four kids have had so much of their lives exploited and shared online for public consumption. Like, it doesn't feel like Amelia, Edie, Alessia, or Andrea for that matter, have ever had a single ounce of privacy in their lives. You know, it feels like Jonathan and Anna have never given them that. It feels like Jonathan and Anna will, you know, will share every single thing online. They don't care about privacy or anything like that. They don't respect his privacy, you know. But, I mean, they've shared, as I've said before, they've shared a lot of things online that should never have been shared. Because they don't give a damn about their kids or they care about his making money from something. I mean, you know, to be honest, I'm quite surprised we haven't seen a video yet on Jonathan about Amelia having her first period on Jonathan's channel. About Amelia having her first period. Well, I'm sure they'd love to make plenty of content about that. You know, especially Jonathan. I think he is, you know. It's just... Like, no, ch no children, no child deserves to be exploited and abused and, 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 and manipulated, you know, and groomed and manipulated in the way that those four kids have been for the past several years. You know, they don't deserve to be sexualized exposed and exposed to predators on a daily basis. You know, they don't deserve to have their parents sharing stuff about them online that shouldn't be shared online. You know, that's the reason that people so know, know so much about the his and know so much about them. 
it's because of the fact that Jonathan and Anna have shared so much online. You know, nothing, it feels like nothing has ever been kept private. You know, Pete, the, the sad truth is, is that, is, is that people know a lot of things about the family that they probably shouldn't really know, to be fairly honest. And that's all because of the fact that Jonathan and Anna have been sharing so much stuff online. You know, like, they, they, Jonathan and Anna have never stopped to think about the damage they're doing to their kids. But you can see that, they think that they're doing a lot of damage to their kids. And it's sad to see. You know, they have, they, they have wrecked and destroyed their kids' lives in so many ways. It's unbelievable. And they will continue to do that. Without, without consequences, they will, they will continue to exploit and abuse their kids every single day because that is what they did. They don't care, you know. They don't they enjoy, they enjoy exploiting their kids for money, you know. It, 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 that's the thing with people like them, is they actually enjoy exploiting their kids for money. Which is why they, which is why they put their kids out there every day, because they get that enjoyment out of exploiting it, his for money, you know, it's just ridiculous, you know, and I've said enough with this, you know, so I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll see you for another one soon, bye bye. <laughs>